Welcome to this presentation on the Autosys Airflow Integration Solution. We want to take this opportunity to explain what the integration brings to the Autosys user community. In our efforts to develop new solutions to support cloud operations, the Airflow integration plays a significant role in the automation of various types of workflows in applications like AWS and Azure. The Autosys Airflow integration brings several key benefits to cloud operations managers. It makes it possible to delegate automation to a platform dedicated to workload management, centralizing and simplifying the entire process, and make it more fluid and transparent. We'll provide some technical insights so that the integration components are clearly identified and the deployment sequence is understood. We'll focus on the job execution sequence and the design of the job in Autosys. Finally, we'll run through a demo. Autosys plays a central role in orchestrating operations across multiple environments, including the cloud, and synchronizes these processes with other non-cloud operations like ERPs. Instead of relying on Airflow workflow management, we can configure process automation centrally in Autosys and then trigger, monitor, and supervise all in one place. Airflow workload can then be synchronized with all other environments routinely supported by Autosys, like applications, databases, and ERPs. Airflow's role is reduced to storing DAGs and submitting them to the cloud solutions. All other functions, especially those pertaining to automation, are delegated to Autosys. Autosys effectively assumes responsibility for the scheduling and execution of a DAG object in Airflow. Airflow lacks the ability to create dependencies between DAGs, and a single DAG job can become long, complex, and difficult to manage, update, and restart. Autosys can run a box, made of multiple sequence DAG jobs. Designing DAGs in Airflow requires coding proficiency. By contrast, Autosys lets us build configurations with intuitive interfaces, like boxes, and supervise in simple dashboard tools designed natively for operations. Statuses are clearly marked, and retrieving logs via spool files is done by checking a box. From an ops perspective, Autosys seldom requires any knowledge of computer programming of any kind. Externalizing operations to a tool with a high degree of third-party integration means we can synchronize all cloud with non-cloud workloads. Using various plugins and job types, we can build sophisticated configurations involving multiple ERPs, multiple database packages, system processes like backups and data consolidation, file transfers, web services, and other on-premise workloads. The job submission sequence is fairly simple because all job definition properties are stored in the Autosys Plain Old Java or Pojo job. All target system properties are defined in the J2EE parameters. The Airflow endpoints, which is the Airflow REST API, the user, password, target DAG name, run ID, and so forth. Let's look at the sequence of execution. We start with the three main components, Autosys, the system agent, and the target Airflow system. The POJO job is submitted to the system agent by Autosys. The agent acknowledges receipt of the job and needs authentication. It posts a bearer token request using the user and password stored in the job's J2EE properties. Airflow sends the bearer token in JSON format. This token is needed for job submission. The agent acquires the token and in return submits the DAG run submission with the token as a post request. Airflow identifies the matching DAG and executes it. Supervision starts concurrently in Airflow and Autosys. The DAG run is given a run ID, which is labeled Autosys, or any other value you set in the properties, to which the date and timestamps are appended. The agent requests status evolutions from Airflow. These requests include the bearer token in the request header. Airflow reports back to the agent using JSON messaging. This is an ongoing process. In the event of failures, it keeps running each time the job is submitted until the max retry value is reached. The agent reports the status evolutions back to Autosys. Let's take a look at how to deploy the integration. First, make sure the Application Services plugin is installed as a prerequisite. The Application Services plugin and POJO extension have the CFG extension. In older agent versions, you might encounter a pack file instead. Next, download the plugin extension package from Marketplace. This package contains all the necessary elements. Unzip the package and extract the contents into a temporary directory. Navigate to the System Agent install directory. Stop the System Agents with the sibagent-s command. Install the plugin extension with this command, plugin installer, and then the System Agent install directory, and then the path to the CFG file. 
Finally, restart the system agents with the sibagent a command. We start with an Apache Airflow Pojo job in Autosys. The job is a simple sleep, which is mapped to a DAG job called sleep, which executes a simple sleep in Airflow. Let's display it. Airflow jobs are Java based. They have several sections. The primary, which contains a name, description, owner, and so forth. The J2W parameters section contains the Airflow properties. The endpoints, which is the Airflow REST API, to which we submit with a post request, the user, password, the name of the target DAG, the run ID label, which is appended to the DAG run in Airflow, the max retry levels in the event of a misfire, and so forth. There are other properties, such as the failure interval, which sets the wait time in seconds between each submission failure, and the log level, details for which you'll find in the documentation. We're working in a split screen with Autosys at the top and the Apache Airflow interface at the bottom. We force the execution of our job and observe the results. We click the Airflow logo to refresh the display. The DAG job is executing. Eventually, the DAG job completes successfully. We can display the details. We see all the successive execution instances. This latest one was given a run ID, which was passed from Autosys with a date and timestamp. Let's check the details. The details page shows important information, such as max active run, DAG run timeout, and more. Back in Autosys, we can find the information relating to the job execution, such as the steps, the spool file, and more. We can see the sequence of events associated with this last run, namely the successive status changes.